In the 1960s, we could classify males from females. We could then, in 94, create evolved digital creatures that would use neural nets to better capture a green cube over their opponent. Finally, all of this is done through a technology learning platform which provides automatic feedback depending on your precise mistake utilizing machine learning. Find out more details of this program at digitacademy.co.uk. Hello and welcome everybody to uh, BI Talks. Today I have Magnus here who has a bachelor's in sustainable engineering, a master's in machine learning, and he's also a founder of SciCode. Now SciCode is a really interesting company because I saw once at an uh, angel investing pitch this young man pitching this idea, his own company about, it's, it's a self-learning platform, self Pro, uh, learning programming platform. Can you tell us a little bit about SciCode, Magnus? Sure. So SciCode has a product called Digit.no. And at Digit, you can uh, create, you can educate, and you can learn programming. So we've got three different roles, and it's all about the most cutting edge technology that you can find imaginable from learning machine learning, learning virtual reality software and uh, learning web development, how to create these applications like Netflix. So that's the kind of platform we specialize in, these skills that people really need in the 21st century. And we optimize the whole learning process around it, making it super stimulating to learn. Wow, okay, so you guys, you, you learn how to create a website, you can create your own virtual reality world, you can create your own Netflix service, you can create all of those stuff through SciCode. Yes, yes, uh, we find that it's one of the things that are not taught enough at university, like project-based learning that's super stimulating and personalized for you. Oh, wow. So that's, that's something we really want to uh, d dive deep into and yeah. really specialize for learners of all categories. So I can create my own World of Warcraft uh, world if I want to and just run around and be an orc and just slay everything if that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we will have a game like that mm -hmm. uh, in the future that you can learn. But mm -hmm. uh, right now, we have a VR workshop coming up next month. I'm in. Uh, where you can learn how to make your own basketball game. Really? Yes. This is amazing. With uh, only 200 lines of code. and 200 lines of code? Yeah. Wow. Um, speaking about code, so... <clears throat> How important do you think it is uh, learning programming and technology for business students, for people entering business in the future? How, how, how important do you think that is? The market size for informal training has grown immensely over the past year and businesses are picking this up faster than ever because they want to upskill their employees. They want to have the competitive advantage in the industry and they want the most cutting edge skills now. And uh, you know what we see at university is that it takes a long time to really switch to the latest technology. Um, and when a new algorithm is coming out every month, when you talk about machine learning, or when you talk about web development, a new framework is coming out every month, a new version is coming out every month, it just doesn't match the industry pace. Yeah. And this is a huge problem. So we're going to have to see a new way of training yeah. that's more efficient, cost efficient, yeah. and makes people want to learn. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I just want, I'm really curious about the journey for SciCode. Mm. Um, <clears throat> can you tell us a little bit, summarize from start to now, how has the journey been? How is it developing a tech startup? It's, I mean, it's a pretty hip thing. It started with Steve Jobs and we have Bill Gates with Microsoft. Tell us, how, how is the journey starting up, uh, starting up a company, but also specifically a tech startup? Well, I mean, I don't know if anyone has seen Pirates of Silicon Valley, which is, uh, tells a very different perspective of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and their relationship together with mm. actually Bill Gates kind of working for Steve Jobs at one point. But it's, it, the whole journey is, uh, has got a lot of uh, uh, ups and downs, uh, that goes out saying. But it's, it's a very uh, inspiring experience. And uh, I was very fortunate that we were uh, chosen from the Research Council to start a company with the Fournier Student Grant, which is applicable for any master's student in Norway. So I recommend any student that has a great idea to check that out. Uh, but we really only got 
were, uh, got that grant because we had such an amazing track record. It's very difficult to get and uh, we were a research team before we started to be a company. So we had a way to verify our, our idea, validate it, uh, really see the problem of, of not learning. Validate. Um, yeah, go on. Sure. Uh, not being able to learn coding, not being able to learn the, the latest uh, technologies and feeling very out of date because of that. So that, that you need to have this problem. You need to have this frustration edging away at you that you just want to solve uh, in society. And that will uh, help you go along uh, for one year, for two years, for five years. It will really push you when you see this problem every day. So You, you see this need and you see a way to create value for society. And, and then, yeah, I was just talking to a startup professor about how, like, if you're motivated by external factors like monetary factors and such, you will not have the right motivation to uh, persevere. Uh, in order to persevere, you've got to be motivated motivated intrinsically, but how many people are in your guys' team? And I, I visited your office once. You guys were a good like eight, seven, ten people here in Oslo, but you guys also, you have co-founders in other parts of the world. Or? So we have, uh, we do have uh, two co-founders. So one is Simon Fosnes, who is our uh, CTO, and he's been with us uh, from the beginning when we were research team, and he's an amazing person, very, very talented, could not have done anything uh, without such an amazing co-founder. Uh, Team is essential, isn't it? It is, it and is. Uh, when, it, when it comes to the full uh, team, we have four people working full-time at the startup lab, and we have six others working part-time. Mm -hmm. uh, one person came all the way down from Russia to work with us for, for six months. Russian help. <laughs> That's good, it's good. Uh, and this guy is fantastic. Yeah. He's, he's amazing so coders in Ukraine and Russia. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I also want to just ask you, from your own experience, I mean, he, you're, you're only 26, what are you? Uh, 27 now. 27 yeah. now, okay, he's yeah. getting old. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, 27 is really young, you know, for going through the journey. I mean, I suppose you've been studying for five years and then and now you've been operating with this for like a couple of years, right? So, so but how, what would you say are the qualities needed in a founder? Uh, that's a great question. So perseverance. Am ambition mm -hmm. uh, and somebody that it really cares about other people's um, uh, success. Somebody mm -hmm. that really cares about the team's success. Somebody that can see past just the product being developed and see how other people are developing uh, and yeah, really wow. see yeah. a growth mindset, encouraging learning, encouraging development of people. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, uh, these people are going to stay with you for for many years to come if yeah. you really care about them. And also if you really care about your customers as well. Yeah. If you really care about their whole experience. So the, the whole kind of uh, environment, you just really need to care for yeah. and, and appreciate. I think that's uh, some of the biggest uh, values. Well, I, I think that's, that's uh, really interesting because uh, first of all, I can just tell uh, there's a lot of passion as you explain it and uh, I've, uh, try to start things up myself and I have kind of started up stuff and it's and I'm like you know you got to be driven by the want to create value you mm -hmm. know for your customers but also want to develop together with your team members and mm -hmm. it was really interesting as you said as a founder you got to see past yourself I think the most contraproductive thing is ego you know I think ego is a mm -hmm. very contraproductive thing and people who start things up are very scared that people, you know, there's a lot of fear. And I think that's mm. probably counterproductive when you have an approach that's about creating value and developing with your people. And just, I think that that's what creates a good environment, a good startup environment. Um, do you have any tips for, for future founders here at BI? I mean, we have a pretty interesting BI startup area. Um, mm. Do you have any tips for how they can make it within their idea? Yeah, I would recommend doing a hackathon with your potential co-founders. or Hackathon? Do hackathon, like uh, two days of 24-7 you know, you know, working and try to build your product and validate it. And at the same time, you'll be working with these people nonstop for those two days, 24-7. And that will tell you a lot about those people. Yeah. That will tell you, do you want to work with this, <laughs> these people for the next two years it's in like this environment? Get, it's like when you get a girlfriend, you, you don't get to know her until you travel with her. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but go on, go on. I'm listening. Sure, yeah. I mean, you just need to have uh, an intense uh, you know, working environment with these people. Uh, 
uh, because they are going to be tried and tested in a startup company. So you have to be sure that they're ready and they are committed and that they can prove that through this kind of experience where you can validate a product, build the product in a short amount of time and just build that MVP, whatever it is, and get it up and running and, and prove something about it.